That's the National Football League. Earlier today, New Orleans Saints safety, oh, sounds sad to say that. New Orleans Saints <laughs> safety Malcolm Jenkins came out and said, eh, the NFL is a non-essential business. And, you know, we, we shouldn't be playing until the risk is eliminated. Where do you stand on whether or not the NFL will start on time? I mean, I don't disagree with what Malcolm's saying as far as a non-essential thing. Like, I, that's, I think that's kind of pretty clear with a lot of these sports. There's, it's, it's there for entertainment. It's not something that you need in your everyday life. He's 100% right. Yeah. Like, there's no doubt about it. But then there's also a part of this whole thing where it's goalpost moving. Mm -hmm. It's stay at home for two weeks, which is now three months, which is to flatten the curve so this doesn't get overwhelmed. And now it's like, stay at home, don't do anything, do this, we're going to open up lightly, this and that, because we really can't do anything until we get a cure for a disease. Like, that's not how diseases have ever worked right. in, in, in the, the history of the world. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, I get, I get the caution and, and the idea that things aren't essential, and, and I fully agree there. But I also think that there's so much money with the NFL that they're going to figure out a way to, to get this going, and, and they're not going to miss any sort of time. I mean, I know they canceled the Hall of Fame game, but yeah. that game, who cares anyway? Right. Really, all that matters is the regular season. Yeah, um, look, getting started on time. I, I, don't, I think Malcolm is coming from the right place, and I don't question his motives at all because, you know, Malcolm is – that's a good human being right there. It's a great human being. But I think it's also easier to take that stance when you've made sixty million dollars over your career. Yeah, I, well, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, uh, obviously, to a little bit of a lesser extent, as the the Kyrie NBA argument about mm -hmm. the bubble and about not playing. And I, I can give it all up. Yeah, you can, you can, you can let it all go because you you have a ton of money in the bank. There are guys on second year deals, rookie contracts, who were undrafted, who made an impact last year, who need the money. They weren't making you know, ten million dollars every year for the past four years. It's 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 tough. It's yeah. tough to tell somebody that when there are guys in the NFL who are saying um who are saying what did oh, the quote from the Redskins guy? Uh if I can remember my grandkids' names, I didn't play the game the right way. Like there are guys with that attitude that are playing in your league. Right. I don't think I don't think they're that worried about coronavirus uh when they put the pads on every Sunday. You're, I think the NFL is interesting, though, because, you know, this isn't the same situation as baseball or, well, let's say basketball or hockey or to a lesser extent baseball. There are some guys who would be at risk playing in the National Football League. You don't see six foot two, 360 pound people in the NBA, but you have massively overweight people playing in the National Football League who would be more susceptible to this virus than other people, especially because this virus disproportionately targets African-Americans. Yeah, the, the 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 weight thing definitely has uh, throws a little bit of a wrench in the situation. But they are they are for the most part peak athletes. I mean, I know I know from a from a physical look standpoint, they may not always. Be you the know, most... that's not the case with every uh, every offensive it's, lineman. It's not with everyone. That's you're right. You're right. But there is a, a lot of them that 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 is the case, um, where that weight is more for for bulk and mass versus they're just fat dudes who eat. McDonald's every day. You know what I mean? I think I think there's still plenty of them. There are, there are <laughs> less than sure there, there were are. before. Cause that, but, you know, there are the people, and I think we're a little bit spoiled with what we have in Philadelphia with, I don't know if you saw the videos of Brandon Brooks doing Muay Thai, but he is <laughs> the 325-pound piece of muscle is all that, that that guy is, and it's crazy. But that's not that's not what everybody is. For every uh, – who was is, who is that – the white – Defensive tackle we had who left to go to Tampa. Bo Allen. For every yeah. for every for every Brandon Brooks, there's a Bo Allen. No shot, no shot at Bo Allen. I think Bo Allen is a good football player and seems like a really fun guy, but he is not in tip top shape. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a good point. It would be. It's gonna be. I think. I don't think anybody from an NFL standpoint would take it seriously until it really seriously affected somebody. Like mm. you know what I mean? Until there was a serious. Like, cause you're still, it, it's, you haven't heard of many players getting or having it, or at least publicly. I like, I know there was the one guy from the Rams who had it three weeks before Brian it Allen. was announced. Yeah. And like, there was that one, but outside of that, you haven't really heard, I guess Von Miller is the other one that I can, that comes to mind immediately. Um, 
But I don't I don't know. I don't know what sport once they get things going, I don't know what it would actually take to officially stop everything again. Football like don't. football will be harder because you have you have the taxi squad and stuff like that and it's a, just a bigger roster. I do think the potential for basketball to be screwed up by six guys getting coronavirus on one team is is kind of high and I would be honestly a little bit surprised if something like that didn't happen. But football will be tougher than than that just because of the sheer number of people on the roster. I don't know. It's just it's a weird situation, man. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see it play out, but we're going to get all of it. We're going to get all of it in July within the next, uh, I guess, 33 or 30, 35 days. We will, it's wild to think about. We will have some semblance of normal back, assuming that the world isn't completely shut down again with you know the, the new cases rising so drastically every single day. But even on that front, and this occurred to me last night, there's no incentive to to shut things back down and shelter in place again because we've now seen what happens when we come out on the other side. So I would think if we were to shelter in place and really hardcore quarantine again, there's no excuse for it not to last until there's a vaccine. And that's a big step to take. Be, uh, there's no... I don't see everyone agreeing to that because there's already so much discourse... Um, you know, to, to which which literally can be blamed on pretty much everyone, uh, from from television to government to pop social media to just people on the street. You can literally blame pretty much everybody. Um, as to as to why, uh, I don't think you could ever without without actually like putting a cop in front of everybody's house mm-hmm. or an, an army person in front of everyone's house to literally stand guard. I I don't think you'd get enough people to actually agree to do it. Uh, it Especially now happen. in this era of protesting. Well, not even protesting because like, like a lot of, at least from what the articles you read, it's like, oh, well, you haven't seen spikes because of protesting. And it's like, uh, okay, th- sure. That's, that, uh, that is very pseudoscience right now. It's unbelievably vague because yeah. there's just no way you can tell people to stay at home, no large gatherings, this, this, and this, and then you have hundreds of thousands of pe- uh, people getting together. There's just no way from a science standpoint. Mm-hmm. Like... It, there's just no way it's not being spread at some point in in those situations. Hey, and and um, we saw what sixty one hundred hardcore Republicans show up for that uh, that rally the the rally the other day, and uh, let's you know, God forbid any of them get sick. I mean, it's it, the 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 idea the idea that people aren't going to get sick, like diseases are new, yeah. is the part that that really sort of is the craziest. And and I know I said it before. It's like we've we've never seen something like this where things shut down, and it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder what's like the root cause of all of it. Like, yeah. is it is it's clearly not the overall death rate of the disease it's more of the number of infections in such a rapid pace and required hospitalizations and things like that um but the, at a certain point like we live with everything we always have yeah. like we we have until we haven't is the problem sure but i but like i didn't live through i mean i guess i was alive for a, a little bit of the ends of at the end of like the the aids epidemic and like that i, I can only imagine the the level of like scaredness that yeah. people had nervousness and and like when it's the unknown and i think that's what part of the coronavirus stuff was at the beginning it's the unknown part of it and we're still in the unknown part of it right. which is the the scariest part i guess you know okay it's, uh certainly interesting last three four minutes how is call of duty uh what is it uh, season four what is it season four yeah. nah, it's pretty good i mean They've they've had some swings and misses with some of the game modes. Uh, I will say that um, the the they introduced a giant like ground war like fifty v fifty. They call yeah. it the war zone rumble. The, it's, it's the only it, thing I played, I played it once. I played it for approximately fifteen seconds before I was like, "This is dumb. Give me regular war zone because that's just like a regular game mode on a part of a, on a part of the Call of Duty war zone map." Like, mm-hmm. It's not. I don't like ground war to begin with. It's too many people. Those types of games don't interest me. There's too many people that just sit around and snipe, and you're just like, I'm walking every two feet that I walk, I just get killed, and it's it's dumb. Um, so that that was sort of a miss. They then introduced uh, what they called realism quads, which was so you have a four person team and you get dropped in the war zone, and 
There's like no, you know, no hit markers when you shoot somebody. There's no uh, UAV. There's no this. Like there's all the all the advantages that you would have like in the regular game. You you didn't have in this case. Uh, I didn't play it because just I never had the opera never had like the numbers to do it because by the time I got around to playing it, all my friends had played that mode and they were like, it's trash. Mm-hmm. And the internet pretty much agree agreed with both of those takes for both of those game modes. Um, outside of that, they've added some some interesting stuff. They have like uh, the what they call like jailbreak. So if your team yeah, say so- you only have one person left and. It's like a certain part of the game. They're like, oh, jailbreak. Everybody who's dead just comes flying back into the game. Um, there's a whole bunch of other features sort of like that that have been pretty cool. Uh, but I, my, my, I need them to do something to the map. I like it because they teased it so much. There's like, there's, you know, bunkers that have nuclear weapons and phones ringing and all this other weird stuff. The, the dam iced over and different leaks and things like that that you see where there's like a potential second city. Give me a map update. Do something. I don't need you to give me a whole new map. That's a ton of work and a ton of... And I don't really want to sit through like a 90 gigabyte download. Yeah. Um, but give me give me something um, from a uh, from a map change-up perspective. Because they just, it's just needed. Yeah. With all of the updates, I believe Call of Duty accounts for 175 gigabytes on hard drives on uh, Xbox Series X right now. So... Or whatever. I mean, Xbox, Xbox One, One. X, whatever. It's, that's what a weird name. It's just. But are, are you speaking of the new consoles? Will you be purchasing either one early on? Uh, early on, really depends on if 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 I can't if I can't play with my friends while still owning my old one, then probably. Um, but my my assumption would be that I can st- if they still I would think so. get Xboxes, I would still be able to play with them. I would probably hold off until I. You know, let let them work the. I've always been a let them work the kinks out kind of guy with technology. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think that would change very much. I would. I'm. I think I might get them both on day one if I can. <laughs> yeah, but I, that's I'm not surprised. That's uh, that's that's you. But it's also but it, and all right. So you've you've gone through this. I would say that my my interest in video games is much higher given my situation right now. And my uh, not being around all of my friends and having all of that stuff available to me. So uh, there is definitely more interest in video games than there would be otherwise. No, that makes sense. I mean, I I was just talking to um, my wife yesterday about it. And it's like my Xbox had dust on it prior to quarantine. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I would break it out every once in a while. But it was always a hassle. There's no, like, permanent spot for it. There wasn't a permanent spot really for it in my old house. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of in a room and, and every once in a while I'd get it and plug it in and I'd play for a couple of hours and that would kind of be it. But now that quarantine has been going on or not, whatever it is now, I guess yeah. it's not quarantine anymore, but sort of that, that stay at home. Uh, it's thing. quarantine like, season it, two. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, uh, I, that Xbox gets broken out every night. Like she's doing work. I'm, I, I'm not just going to sit here on my phone. I, I don't know what, like, I don't know what else to do. And, and, uh, unfortunately, Warzone's sort of been the uh, the godsend in this situation. Yeah, I bought Last of Us Part Two. I've been playing that a little bit mm-hmm. on my PlayStation Four. So, well, uh, I have been uh, I have been sort of teetering out a little bit, but I, I would I'd like to beat it since you know I started it. I just don't know how much more time there is, and that's daunting. But that's a problem for another day. Uh, until then, this has been You're Wrong, and here's why. I've been Chris Horwardell. He's been Greg Crone. We thank you for listening, and we'll see you back here next week.